Welcome to Rick Rack Ruby. I'm Laura Cluvo. Today we will make one of my favorite projects, the Vintage Handkerchief Angel. It's really fun and easy, so let's get started because you can make this. To make the Handkerchief Angel ornament, we'll start with a 20 millimeter head bead. This face will work with any handkerchief that is about 10 to 12 inches square. So this one's about 10 inches. Anything smaller than 10, I would go down to a 16 millimeter. I have pressed my handkerchief and folded it and pressed the crease so that I have about a one inch border of the bottom showing below the edge. Any kind of a handkerchief will work. I never spend more than a dollar for a handkerchief if I have to buy them, but I find that once my friends realize that I was making these, um, I receive many handkerchiefs as gifts, and I'm always happy to create a design in return. Anyway, so to start, I have two lengths of six inch wide tool. They are about 15 inches long. And then about 15 inches of 1 16th inch wide satin ribbon. I'm gonna tie it off in the center to secure the folded over tool, just like that. Then I'll thread the ribbon through the head bead from the bottom to the top. I'm going to pull so that the tool fills the hole. And then add a little drop of hot glue in the back before sliding the head down to secure. Then an overhand knot in the top to create the hanging loop. Set that aside and now we'll gather up the handkerchief to create her dress. I will fold it into a ring like this. I like to use a thimble. Starting right here where the front overlaps, I'm going to stitch through the top about an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around through that folded and pressed edge. While I'm stitching, I will let you know that any kind of a handkerchief will work. Some of them have monograms, which is really fun to do a personalized design for your daughter, your friend, or your granddaughter. Some of them have all four corners decorated, which makes a beautiful and impressive angel. And then some of them will be damaged, which I actually really like because it's not hard to disguise the damage and then I feel like, well, I don't wanna use anything that's too perfect, right? I'm slipping the angel into the center of the handkerchief and pulling the gathers tight. This front should overlap. I like the overlap to be to the side like this, not right in the middle because then the decoration goes over. We want the decoration in the center and I pull it nice and tight, secure by wrapping and stitching. This is also why you don't want too much hot glue because it can be hard to sew through if you get a big glob of hot glue. Just a tiny little smudge of glue is enough to secure the head. Then I'm going to tie off the knot in back. I don't have to worry too much because I'm, I have a lot more layers to go. Now this is a really important step. I like the way she looks, but I don't want her dress to come apart. So I'm gonna overlap these layers, lift up the decorated top layer. I'm gonna pull that out of the way. And I just do one stitch down and up, not through any of the tool, 
And then I just do a simple little knot right here. Don't pull it too tight. You don't want to make a little pucker. But that kind of holds the dress. And then I can fold that back over and you will never notice that. But you will notice that her dress stays nice and closed. And then trim off the tulle. The next step is to create a lace collar. I'm going to use this sort of taupe color because I like the way the taupe sort of matches the neutral tone in the lace of the handkerchief. I'll take about 12 to 15 inches and then I'm going to gather this up as a collar. Fold the starting end under so you have something a little bit more substantial to secure the knot and then just stitch down and up, down and up with a running stitch all the way down the length of the lace. So that's all gathered up and I'm going to place this around her neck, secure it in the back, and tie it off. I try to distribute the fullness of the gathers evenly so I don't have too much on one side or the other. In and out, back to front, and then secure in the back. I really like to use a thimble. I don't have to be super careful because I will be gluing the wings back there and that will help to secure it. Let's add a decoration here. She has so much going on that I don't think she needs a lot. Let's do a length of this trim and then a button or a millinery flower or a little ribbon bow. There's a million things you could use, but I'm going to use one of these. This is some kind of sequin trim that I like. I'll show you some alternatives though. I could use one of these flowers. That would be really cute. I could cut off a lace flower or I could even use some of these paper forget-me-not flowers. There's a million things you could use. I just kind of like the vintage look of this. Great. That looks great. Okay, let's do her hair. Here's the hair yarn. One, two, three, four. If you watched my last series on creating ornaments from jelly rolls and creating ornaments from charm packs, this will be familiar to you. So I won't spend too much time explaining it. One, two, three, four. Extra long tail and then send it down, around, tie it off in the center so that I have this nice little figure eight shaped bundle. Then I'll glue this to the back of the head, the nice generous amount of glue. Don't have to be too careful with the back of the head. We do want to be a little bit more careful with the front so that her hair doesn't cover her face too much so that it looks kind of cute and even on both sides and so that it has a nice style. Great. That looks great. I'm going to tie a little knot in the ends of these. Just a little overhand knot. It gives it a little bit of weight so it's not just dangling so loosely. And I will trim those. Now for her halo. This is 20 gauge gold wire. I wrap it around my thimble just to kind of help give it a nice round shape. 
a drop of glue on each end and then glue it into her hair like a hairband. And now her wings. I have two options. Let's see which one we like. I used my die cutting machine to cut these from five inch scallop circles. And then I folded them over and sewed around the border with a little zigzag on my machine. Which one do we like? I think either one is fine. Let's use this one. Then I'm gluing the wings to the back of her head. I have found a lot of my students, um, they tend to put the wings down low here and that looks fine, but I just kind of prefer it up a little bit higher. So it sort of frames her face. And let's have a look. I think she's perfect.